and I can selectively choose which partitions I want to process. I'll go ahead and process all of them and do a process full. And then I would process all of that, which is going to take about 40 minutes to do the processing. And then in the future, I would only process the last partition if that's the only, um, the only data that's been added to the database. And then if data were changed in particular years, then I can selectively uh, process those partitions. And then of course I can schedule uh, all of this processing to happen in the middle of the night. I can do incremental processing. I can create a new partition next year and then just part, uh, process that partition. So I have complete control over managing all of my data and it really doesn't matter how big that is. Using um, the uh, tabular storage option um, in analysis services, this table takes up about 1.3 uh, gigabytes of space, which is too big to put into a uh, Power BI model that doesn't use direct connection to analysis services. So I'm going to go ahead and process these for the first time. I'll go ahead and do a process full. We'll do a cooking show demo so you don't have to sit and watch uh, Spinny. Here we're about 20 minutes in, just checking in. All right, full processing took about 35 minutes. That's done and ready to go. So I'm going to open uh, a new Power BI desktop project that we will use with this uh, server-based analysis services tabular model. So when Power BI desktop opens up in the splash screen, it'll prompt me to get data. I'll go ahead and connect to SQL Server analysis services and enter my server instance name. And uh, once again, this is going to uh, connect live rather than import. And I'll choose my database. And you can see that that has a, a model that also appears to be a cube for consistency. Both multidimensional and tabular will always show the, the model as a cube. All right, and then immediately I see all of the fields available from that table. Just uh, just another reminder, I've just made a point to keep this model very, very simple. It has one table with uh, uh, all of the numeric and um, attribute columns. Now, I know that I want to make a change to this model, and I just want to point out that I, I don't make those changes here. Uh, my All of my my design options are grayed out because that model is maintained on the server and I don't want to give users the ability to go making changes and creating their own measures and changing data types or um, aggregation behavior, etc. That's all maintained by a developer or my administrator. But I will get started with some reporting. So let's start with the uh, carrier. I'll go ahead and add a list of our carriers. And then I'll add my flight count. I can sort that by flight count so I can see my uh, poorest performing um, carriers, uh, airline carriers, uh, in descending order. And then let's do a day by day uh, performance. Now, before I do that, um, I made a point actually not to um, change the uh, defaults um, summarization. So this, um, the departure delay, uh, like all measures or all numeric columns, which are implicit measures, um, is, is set, uh, it's actually not set at all. I believe that that will summarize, that will uh, use the sum function, which is not what I want to see. I want to see the uh, average of the departure delay. So I'll show you how easy it is to maintain a deployed model. So since we have uh, Visual Studio open with our, our model open, um, first of all, let's just find that departure delay column right here.
and we'll say I want to change the summarize by to average. Now it's my belief that uh, you should create explicit measures for anything that you you want to report on, and and I think that there are there are some arguments against that, some valid arguments against that, that numeric columns can simply be aggregated by a tool. But I, I like the idea of actually hiding these columns and creating my own measures. So just to demonstrate that we can do that, and this will be redundant, um, but I'm going to create a measure called uh, average departure delay and the logic for that will be essentially the same as what I just did by changing the de default summarization behavior. We'll call the average function on the departure delay column and I'll format that as a whole number. Theoretically it should never be big enough to need a thousand separator but I'll format that. I'll do the same thing for this column. Uh, that is a whole number and it'll have a thousand separator simply because I think that's a good idea. In order to uh, push that to the server, first of all I want to make sure that when I'm deploying I'm not processing, otherwise we'll have to sit and wait for the model to get processed or uh, to get repopulated with data, but there's no need to do that. So we just say do not process and then we redeploy the model which should only take a very short period of time and it's done. We'll jump back to Power BI Desktop, just hit refresh which will refresh my fields and now I um, can see that I've fat fingered my average departure delay but you can see that uh, my departure delay um, implicit measure should behave as I want it to. Let's put flight date on the axis and change that to a line chart. Okay, that is 57 million individual flights. Uh, actually, it's by day, so that's going to be a little over 3,000 days over nine years. And you can see that it's very fast and responsive. And the measure that I created will do exactly the same thing since it's based on the same column. Finally, I will save this model. Let's call it uh, Airline On Time Performance uh, Direct Query. You can see, I've done that a few times. We'll give that a unique name. And then we'll go ahead and publish this. Since I'm connected to my subscription, I should be prompted for a workspace. It's very quick because there's no data in the model. And then we should be good to go. And there's my published model. So I'm in the browser. I'm actually using this as a user. First time it took a little under a second to query. And now every time I slice the data or interact with it, it's taking uh, about a second, maybe a little, little less um, to get those results. So the uh, uh, queries are being sent down to the server through the enterprise gateway being processed on the server against my tabular model within analysis services. Results are going back and being consumed here within the published service. So there you have it. Um, four different options. Uh, we uh, used direct query against a standard relational database. We used direct query against uh, a SQL Server 2016 database with a clustered column store index, which sped up queries considerably. Then we used a direct connection against analysis services multidimensional, created a KPI, and then we created a direct connection against analysis services um, also on-premises 
using a tabular model. So what's the advantage of each? Well, I can connect directly to SQL Server or other enterprise database products, and I'm simply leveraging the work that I've done. I am limited in terms of the number of DAX query or DAX functions that I can use, but if my models are simple and my analytical needs are relatively simple, and that's a really good option without a lot of additional design work. Using analysis services, I would use a multi-dimensional database if uh, I've already built cubes, if I have skills with MDX and I'm accustomed to creating my measures uh, and doing all of my design work using multi-dimensional, uh, or if I'm using any of the features of analysis services multi-dimensional that are not offered in, in tabular, like parent-child hierarchies, for example. Um, but the tabular analysis services technology has uh, advanced a lot recently. Uh, I think that in SQL Server 2016, it's very viable. Uh, it's all in memory, which makes it very fast. Development time is, is less. And I'm taking advantage of skills uh, using DAX as both a calculation and expression language and then um, it's very responsive using it um, with DAX queries from Power BI in the cloud.